celebrating uh, African American History Month. And we have uh, Brenda Sanders Wise from the Tarrant County Black Historical and Genealogical Society. Um, that's a mouthful. You take, um, a, you take a breath in between. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll do that next time. I will. Um, and uh, she's a Fort Worth native who, uh, after working in business and television for a number of years, has come to work in local history. I'm sure she's going to tell you a little bit more about. Uh, some of the things that uh, she has done here locally. I will say that she is a member of the um, Historic Landmarks Commission for the city uh, and participates in other uh, local historical organizations in addition to her uh, actual job. So we're going to hear today a little bit about the, uh, the projects that the Historical Society are working on uh, and the things that are going on uh, in the community that they have been involved in. You see, uh, one of their upcoming projects right here. So with that, I'll turn it over to Brenda Sanders Wise. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you very much. This looks like church. People sit on this side. <laughs> but you're not in my sign seat, I can tell you that. I'd like to thank Leanna for reaching out to us to be a part of this series. We never say no. Whenever someone wants us to speak about genealogy, history, we want to get our name out there. And I'd like to thank our board members for supporting us. And there are a couple of people that actually walked and talked with Mrs. Rolla, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So before you leave today, or when we end this program, get to know at least two people. I'll call their names later. But get to know these people because they were actually workers with Mrs. Rolla as she was journeying through this process, okay? And I didn't know Mrs. Rolla. I was not here at the time. I traveled with my job, so I wasn't here. But when I came back home, which is Texas, which is Fort Worth, uh, I got involved in local history. We've always been a part of history, our family has, because we're still living on land that our forefathers set, uh, settled in the 1800s. So the house that I live in is on virgin land. And all the properties on my street is virgin land. Nobody else has lived there except Native Americans. And then you turn the corner and there's just the church. So all of that's virgin land. And it's the first African American <clears throat> historic and cultural landmark district in Tarrant County. And it's called the Garden of Eden Neighborhood Association. Okay? So we're there. And we're still there, and God has not kicked us out of the Garden of Eden. <laughs> so we must be doing something right. So. I am married to Dennis Wise, and without him, a lot of things could not get done technologically because he's my right hand at home as well as at the museum, uh, Lenore Rolla Heritage Center Museum. Without him, a lot of things couldn't happen. So I want to thank him. Again, thank our board members for being here. But I want to talk a little bit about, and I'm going to have to move because I don't have a remote, and I hope I'm not going to be in your way. But we're going to talk a little bit about our organization that's been around and this is our 37th year. <coughs> so when Mrs. Rolla passed away, the dream did not die. The organization it was dormant for a while, but it didn't die. And people kept the journey going. So here we go. This is Black History Month for us and this is our busiest time of the year. And today we're going to learn about the history of our organization, the Tarrant County Black Historical and Genealogical Society. Uh, and it encompasses a lot of things, whether it's art, whether it's music, whether it's history about religion, education, we have all that history. And we're going to recount the efforts of our founder, Mrs. Rolla. And um, she saw that there was a need for this uh, preservation of our history, and she made it happen. So without her taking on the task, we wouldn't have this great organization for 37 years. So we're going to talk about our educational programs. We're going to talk about our exhibits, past and present, and our future plans. And then we're going to talk about uh, our calendar, OK? So much for me. It's not about me, it's about the organization, all right? The founders, the charter members, and as you can see, only three people are still living, to my knowledge. And I tried to find if Mr. Slaughter was still living, but 
Nobody I looked him up on the internet. There are three of them around here in, in Houston, I mean in uh, Fort Worth, so hopefully he's still around and I'd like to get to meet him. So, But qu quite a few people that founded this organization, they thought it was necessary. And three are still living. This is Mrs. Rolla, born in 1904, deceased 2001. A mighty lady. She was married to Jacob Rolla. And I'm sorry, you can't see this real well, but my background is kind of tan, and the wall is tan, and we should have been in that room next door. This is Mrs. Rolla receiving an award. This lady was an extraordinary woman. Extraordinary. Yeah, extraordinary. And she met a lot of people. She was the organizer and the founder of our organization. By definition, she was a public servant, just like we all are. I tell our board members all the time, this is no glory position, okay? Don't just put it on your resume. You are a working board, okay? You have to do something. This is what she was all about. Uh, very dedicated. She saw a need for a neighborhood community space for children so they wouldn't go astray. So she founded the Hattie Street Haven. Then she served also as Dean of Women at Jarvis Christian College. She was a busy lady. She never was still. And probably that's why she lived so long. Okay? So don't get too comfortable when you retire. Keep busy. <laughs> Keep busy. Because I retired in 2000, I'm still working. She was the founder of the Community Christian Church, one of them, and she served as vice president of the National Christian Missionary Convention. Now this church is very instrumental because they help us too. They're in the neighborhood, so when we need them, we call them. When they need us, we're there for them. She was also responsible for recovery and preservation uh, of the African American artifacts and placing them under the watchful eye of herself and the organization because she definitely took care of things. <clears throat> In 1974, while serving on various committees, bicentennial committees, she noticed that she couldn't find out a lot of information about African Americans right here in our hometown. She also worked as a docent for the museum, uh, Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. And as she was taking the tour and showing people around and describing all the history, there was history about Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, they didn't live here. But what about the people that lived right here? So she decided, I'm going to start collecting for this organization and we need to preserve our history. So, there was not a lot of information about us anywhere. Universities, library repositories, none of that. Museums, none of that. The first meetings were held in her home. That's how dedicated she was. She had a passion for preserving this history. And then later the meetings were held at uh, the Berry uh, Street Branch. Library, very important. If there's no library in your neighborhood, there's something wrong. And that's what's missing in the Garden of Eden, and we're working on that. The church is serving as that building, as that light in the community, but you need a library and you need a school. And then a nice young lady decided to let her use two of her rental houses to open up a meeting place and a museum. Again, she didn't give up because she didn't have a place to have a meeting. She didn't have a place to store all of her information. Somebody will always look out for you. I say God has a ram in the bush. Always. always. Our mission as an organization, and it's a long one, and somebody told us to shorten it. I can't find a way to do it. <laughs> and if anybody can help me, please. This mission statement has been around for a long time, before I came around. So if you can shorten this, this is what we do, this is our mission. We locate, we collect, we analyze, we organize, and preserve African-American historical contributions. And we use these contributions to educate, to empower, and interpret the African-American life right here in Tarrant County. Now if you can shorten that, please let me know. <laughs> they wanted me to do the elevator speech. I can't do it, it's all right. It's all right. you know, we can't do it. The vision statement, 
to be the main source in the community to raise awareness of local black history and culture. And you'll see these terms uh, interchange, black, African American, at one time it was black, one time it was African American, but it's still black. Their education will provide a greater understanding of themselves through black art, that poster will describe that, and through black history. We strive to exhibit historically, significant exhibitions, we'll tell you about one in a minute, artifacts, private collections, and if you have any, bring them to us and we'll take good care of them. Uh, private collections, photographs, as well as genealogical uh, education. Now, we have some things at our museum right now, and it's, I think it represents maybe 1 32nd of all of our collection because over 10,000 items are right here in this library downstairs, okay? And we're still collecting at the museum. People keep bringing us things and we don't really have a place to store them properly. We're working on that. We just got, just got some, uh, some funds to help with that. I'm not gonna read every one of these milestones either, but since 1977, we were chartered by the state it tells exactly what happened. She bought a house so she could have a, a museum, so she could store all of our information, okay? This house is called the Boone House. It was built in 1926, and it belonged to a minister. His name was Reverend A.L. Boone. In 1982, I don't know how many they had in 1977, but in 1982, she had 190 members. 180, that's quite a few. She made an alliance with UT Arlington, okay? She was busy. She did not sit down. She opened uh, the Library Museum on Humboldt Street, and it's still there. We're gonna forever be there. She was quite busy. Again, I'm not gonna read all that. Uh, if you'd like a copy of some of this, I can send it to you. Again, more milestones. Here we are in the 90s. She was busy. She was adopted by the AKAs, Alpha Kappa Alpha. She updated the exhibit equipment, meaning she got cases to put things in, bookcases to store books on, things like that. Um, she had a book review. It was very important that Pete Guerin, that, that's a very important name here, state legislator, he's now part of the Sid Richardson Museum uh, Foundation. So this guy is very, very important. And we still have a relationship with the Sid Richardson Museum. Uh, again, busy. All-American exhibit at the Fort Worth Public Library. She was very, 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 uh, I say hands-on, being friends with the library. Because that's how you get your message out to a lot of people. And then in 1997, the 20th uh, anniversary celebration took place. And then in 1997, something very historic happened. The library, Fourth Museum of Science and History, and our organization got together, and I think uh, Sarah and Gail Hansen can tell you a, a whole lot more about after this presentation. But they began uh, a new research uh, to, to trace family ancestry from that Henrietta Marie slave ship exhibition. And we have panels that are at least six feet, eight feet tall that describe the shipwreck and when they finished with the tour, this exhibit at the Museum of Science and History, they gave them to our organization. So we still have them, and they're displayed every day at our, our museum on Humboldt Street. We leave them up so that they can be a reminder that this actually happened, slaves are part of our heritage, and we can't forget about it, and we have to talk about it. And we have to teach our children. So you have to pass information down so that they won't forget. That's history. That's how you keep it. Also in 1997, I guess you could call it tragic, and then something very good happened. It was closed, but for preservation and repairs, okay? <clears throat> you can't see this very well, however. This organization helped the city decide what to put on Evans Avenue, on that plaza, along with the new library. 
uh, on that plaza, you have on Evans Avenue in front of the library, down that street, you have history markers. If you walk down that street, you can see these, this information about these very important people in the neighborhood. More milestones. So we made it to 2000. We're still here, okay? Revitalization's taking place. Again, the organization's partnering with the city, okay? The major funding came from the city, but also private citizens gave money to see this house, the Boone House, restored. And we'll show you some examples in a minute, and I hope you can see them. If not, come by the museum and you can see all of this. So, 2007, they had the groundbreaking ceremony for the exterior of the home. It was complete. It looked really, really good. Nice and green. Green to me is money. I like it. <laughs> A lot of people don't like that color for that building. But on that corner, when it's green, <laughs> when it's green, you can see it. You can't miss it. And then you see Baker Chapel. But you can see us if, when it's green. Uh, then they dedicated in 2009, big fanfare, and then we got some more funding from the city and private citizens for the final renovation on the inside. So the inside had to be maintained as well. Then we started something in 2010 because we needed money to, to help keep the place up. So our first Harambe festival took place. And Harambe means all pulled together. So the city, the school district, private citizens, the community, whatever, businesses, we all pulled together and we're on that plaza having a great time from nine until nine. Whether it's at the Wellness Expo, the Kids Zone, eating food from the vendors, uh, listening to music, it's all there. Okay, we have professional entertainers as some people think they are, okay? but they're there, they're from the community. But in 2011, the renovation was finally completed and we had an open house and everybody, that was every, anybody was there and we had quite a few people. <clears throat> 2011, we did a lot of things in 2011. A lot of things. Freedom Train. We partnered with the city again Get to know your city well, because they can help you. Uh, the Forward Arts Council came to us and yes, we like to be part of this public art campaign. And they wanted to honor the Pullman Porters because the Pullman Porters lived in the neighborhood of Terrell Heights. But a lot of blacks during this time that the railroad uh, was, I say the major means of transportation, blacks were the porters, the baggage handlers, and things like that. So it was very, very important for us to, to honor them. And one in particular was Garfield Thompson. He was also uh, a state legislator. And again, all of this information is at the TMP, Texas and Pacific Railway Station on Lancaster. And the artwork is lit all year round. So there's a train track. And there is a man, and he's black, but he's carrying bags, and he's bent over a little bit so he's, because he's carrying the bag. He can't be an engineer. He can't be a conductor, so he's got to carry the bags. And then the next image of sculpture, uh, he's a little bit more upright because now he's able to serve on the tray, you know? He's working in the dining cars, things like that. And then the last image, he's standing straight up with his bags in his hand and a newspaper and he's walking on that tray because now I can sit anywhere I want to. Okay, so it's progression. So we're very proud of that piece of art. And at that uh, train station, there is the original bench that colored people sat on in the colored waiting room. All of this is history and it has to be preserved. It was the times we lived in. But again, it's there, we talk about it. It's what makes our city so great. We're still here. Again, we secured partnerships with 
Museum of Science and History, Amy Carter, without them, when they finished our building, we wouldn't have cases to put our, our artifacts in. You know, if I knew she knew them, that's the first people I talk to. You know, I like to partner because we don't have any money. So you make friends. And that's exactly what I did. And they were willing to help. People don't mind. You have to ask. Sometimes it's no. Maybe a lot of times it's no. But guess what? Keep asking. Somebody will give you something. And then we adopted a school. I told our organization, you can't just be there for people to give to you. You have to give back. So we adopted a school. It's the Van Zandt Gwen Elementary School right there in the neighborhood. So we're part of their mentors. We provide some years with backpacks, gloves, sweaters, whatever they need for Christmas time in the winter time. Uh, this year, they partnered with us. We included them in our art contest, our art show. This is our first juried art show. Again, these museums helped us out, okay? <clears throat> They're gonna be some of our jurors. But we also want the children to know that you can aspire to be anything you want to be. And so yesterday, we judged their artwork and we took an artist to judge the work. It wasn't me because I don't have that critical eye as an artist. I know what I like, but an artist knows exactly what to look for. And so we chose first, second, and third place winners in grades three through five. And the first place winners in those grades their artwork is gonna be shown at the museum for the whole month of black history. And there's a story that's gonna be written about those kids by the Star Telegram. They were out there too yesterday and they were so impressed with the children being so excited about being included. And so please come out, see this exhibit and we'll talk more about that later. <clears throat> but it's the whole month of February. Again, we did a lot in 2011. We speak at TCC, North Camp, Northeast Campus, the South Campus. Wherever people ask us to come, we go. We need to get our, our name out there. One of our other interesting um, meetings that we had, we had an evening with Lorraine Miller. Again, we reach high. Sometimes they tell us no, but this lady, a black lady was the 35th house clerk, the U.S. House of Representatives. She worked for Nancy Pelosi, Bill Clinton, and all those people. She lived right there in Terrell Heights, okay, on Terrell Avenue. She still has a home there, okay. She is now the interim president of the NAACP nationally. So we know people. We just have to give them uh, that opportunity to come back to us and give back to us. She did. We had the event at the Hilton. People pay $50 to see her, okay? Because she's important and they knew her, okay? And it was something worthwhile for the community. And it wasn't just people like me, it was all kinds of people. And we invited Van Zandt Gwen, again, the school, to come out and their kids have an after school choir. And they sang, okay? We came here and do I see it? Yeah, our 35th anniversary. And when they picked me to be their executive director, they picked the wrong person probably because I reach for the sky and I want things done quickly. And sometimes it doesn't happen that way. But on the 35th anniversary, we were right here in the library, out there in the gallery and in that room next door. And we were flooded with people. And we ate dinner, we danced, we sang. We ate, you know, and we had a presentation. And again, our friends from the city came, commissioners came, black chamber came, museum came, they were all here. They supported us. You can't give up, okay? So I told them since we can do 35 years here, our 50th, we're going to the Capitol and we're gonna celebrate there. Again, that's me. The board didn't agree with that, so. I haven't given up. We can still go to the Capitol and say, Governor, here we are. And uh, now it's your turn to help us, okay? Anyway, 
this has been uh, the 2000s and then here we are 2014 having a juried art show. Never had one before. Here we are. I know nothing about art except what I like. I do know some artists and well-known artists at that. And I love to go to the museums, but I'm not, a, I'm not an artist. But I know, that, I know that we have great black artists right here in our city. Burl Washington is one of them. The Huckabees, man and wife, there are others. And there's one, E.L. Young, who taught himself. And he's the guy who spoke to the kids yesterday. He taught himself how to draw, how to paint. And his paintings look like photographs. He is excellent. So if you ever go up on his website, it's art too. And I was very surprised that he was in the 21st century with an iPad for the kids. And they could relate to him because he had an iPad. So he had his artwork on an iPad and they were able to see the kinds of work that he did and they couldn't believe it, okay? So we had about 50 students that participated on yesterday and they were all eager to find out who the winners were, so anyway. Okay, I think we kind of touched on that. Uh, during the first year of operation, she was on the 1100 block of Rosedale. And you can't see this very well, but this house was taken back to the original, okay? And I hate we have this kind of wall, but next time I'm keeping my background white. <laughs> when I come here, it's gonna be white. But this house transformed, they took it back, redid the outside, the exterior work. And I wish you could see this pretty green color that it is. Again, green reminds me of money and it can stay green forever. Uh, but then we started having some problems with the paint and start peeling, the wood was popping. But thank God, again, some people do listen to you when you write. Home Depot came to the rescue with a, with a grant. So they pulled all the old wood off Okay, went back to even, I don't know what you call the black stuff that's there before you get to the plywood. But they took it all off and put the hardy plank on. So that's a concrete board and guess what? It doesn't burn. And so it's very, very safe now. We are in the process of painting it back green because their board is kind of a, a yellow, off-white off or whatever. But we made it. But that's, that's how it looked. And I wish you could see these vibrant, this vibrant color, these people that are working to plant and going green in more ways than one by planting trees and painting this house green, okay? That's the celebration for the 2009 opening. And we have some great uh, board members. These are our current board members. And for some reason, we have some people that kind of rotate off and every now and then, why are we always changing? Because people work, they have real jobs. You have to be a volunteer, you gotta have a passion, you have to wanna do this work to stay. You gotta stick, you gotta stay. If you don't, but I advise your board members, they've been around. They haven't left us, okay? Again, more open house. We had fun that day. We had plenty of food, we had plenty of people. And I, you can see a little bit. We had entertainment. We visited TCC South Campus, that's this campus. We've even been to Miss Twyla, your, the Northeast Campus, we've been there. Anna Boris is in our audience today, as well as Gail Hansen. They conduct a lot of our workshops. Historians, genealogists, family historians, genealogists, they're here. And they conduct most of our programs. This is the wall I was telling you about that was dedicated to uh, the Pullman Porters, and it stays lit year round. Harambe, again, we get the city involved. Uh, this past year, we had over 300 students from the uh, Fort Worth ISD to participate. And anti-bullying is, is another one um, concept that we've grasped, and that's where the Fort Worth ISD comes into play. They partner with us, and they help us get the message out about anti-bullying because it's not okay. And so we uh, dedicated a whole program, maybe two hours, to anti-bullying. So October 18th is that day this year. Please come out and be with them. 
and with us. And we have volunteers, we need volunteers. The Black Voice newspaper is our official newspaper for Harambe, along with others. <clears throat> and we have the Health Fair, the Wellness Expo, and we have people from every uh, genre, whether it be Life Gift, because people need to know about organ donation. It could be about um, heart, diabetes, things like that. You learn about it. Dan and Yogurt donates about, oh boy, 6,000 cartons of yogurt. It, and it's just there for the taking and people they take. And it's there for the community. Again, it's another sign of healthy. And this is Lorraine Miller receiving the key to the city. And there's Kathleen Hicks, city council person. Zim Zimmerman is pinning, giving her the key. Bob Ray Sanders is our official spokesperson when it comes to uh, being the MC. Even when we have our lectures, he's the one. If I write a grant to Humanities Texas, Bob Ray is my person that's going to be the interviewer because he's their spokesperson. Okay, he's on their approved list. So why would I go try to find somebody else? He's related. <laughs> And here's some more activities. We met with Dr. Riley Ransom Sr.'s daughter. That's his daughter. He was the first black surgeon here in Fort Worth. But that's his daughter. She still lives in their house on Terrell Avenue. And she gave up her time one evening and we spoke with her. And that's that event. And Bob Ray is our person. He's interviewing her. She's answering the questions. And we had fun. And these are the Stearns. Judge Stearns is one of the guys here. And all of these guys are with the Community Christian Church, which is on the corner. Very, very instrumental in the community. These are some um, historical photographs that you may see in our museum. This is Professor I.M. Terrell. And that's his wife. Now for a long time, there was only one black school, high school, in Fort Worth. Professor I.M. Terrell was named after him. Say, so come to our museum and you can learn all about it. You can see this photograph. You can see some of his faculty members. <clears throat> Reverend A.L. Boone, good looking guy, okay? Big house. I think the church was Mount Gilead. And this is Allen Chapel Amy Church, one of the oldest churches here in Fort Worth. And it's downtown Fort Worth, okay? Again, we have these kind of photographs in our collection. And this is William Gooseneck McDonald, first black millionaire right here, Fort Worth, Texas, okay? He was also a banker, okay? He owned a bank called the Fraternal Bank and Trust. And guess what? When the stock market crashed, his bank did not. It was one of the only banks in Fort Worth, I think the Exchange Bank on the north side, so those the only two banks that did not crash. He still had money in, in the bank. Okay. We'll be doing um, a series right here at the library about this man right here. So come back June 21st. And Jan Jones and Bob Ray Sanders will be uh, very instrumental in that particular presentation. Sponsored by the library and us. And this is Dr. Riley Ransom, Sr. and Jr. Again, working together op in the same operating room. He had a hospital, it's called the Ethel Ransom Hospital, right down on Jones and Knight Street, downtown, Fort Worth, okay? Blacks could not attend, or could not go to the white hospitals, we all know that. So, there was a hospital for us, he did treat them. Dr. Brooks uh, also, was very instrumental, all the Brooks brothers uh, who were doctors. But according to his daughter, he not only treated blacks, he treated Spanish, he made, she made sure she said Spanish and Mexicans, because there is a difference, and Indians. So you got blacks, Spanish, Indians, and Mexicans that he treated, because they could not either uh, go to white hospitals. And this is Mr. Calvin Littlejohn. And I think that's his grandson back there. He always shows up. Thank you for supporting us. But without this man, he took a lot of these photographs that, uh, not I am Daryl, but 
for the black uh, community. Without him, we wouldn't have any kind of school history preserved. We wouldn't have any parties, political parties preserved from the black perspective. We wouldn't have any society, school functions. It was all because of him and some more, but he is the one. He's the main one, okay? <clears throat> Mr. Little John, come by and see. And then we have people like <clears throat> the Moody's and the Brinsoms. In our museum, we try to represent Tarrant County because that's who we say we are, Tarrant County Black Historical and Genealogical Society. So we have Mansfield, Texas represented. We have the Garden of Eden represented. We have Moja Valley represented, which is Euless, and it's one of the oldest settlements, but we're the oldest in the Garden of Eden. I had to let them know that. <laughs> they think they are, but they're not. We were here first. It doesn't matter. The history has been preserved. And they have history on display at TCC Northeast. So go see those photographs. And we also have Stop Six represent. So come by and grapevine. So come by and see the history in our museum. But these were the, the, the families that settled early, especially the Moody's in Mansfield. And when there's only two or three families in a neighborhood, in a community, you're gonna marry somebody in the community. So that's husband and wife right there. They ended up marrying each other. This is the Garden of Eden. These are the pioneer settlers, Major and Melinda Cheney. On their land, they were sitting on a hot bed of gravel, okay? On their land, Fort Worth sand and gravel got started in their backyard. It is now TXI. There was no school for blacks in that area at the time, so he gave, donated, a half acre of his land for a school for blacks in 1891 through 1906. And they were certified teachers by the Burville Independent School District. And in 2009, after much lobbying <laughs> by our neighborhood association, and then we pull Bob Ray in when we get a chance, like write about this, I'll go visit somebody, because the message needs to, uh, to get out. But this guy was important, and we need a school named after him. Okay, and guess what? 2009, they changed the name of South Burville to Major Cheney Elementary School at South Burville, which is right up the street. It's not in our neighborhood, but it's close by. Again, we don't have a library, but we're working on it. But that's the history. And then you have Stop Six. This is Amanda Davis, first black lady to buy land in Stop Six in that area. She bought an acre of land for $45. She traded with the Indians. She would give them meat, they give her blankets during the winter time. So she traded with them at Village Creek, right there. So if you're passing down 820, you see Village Creek, you'll say, ah, Amanda Davis. There's a street named after her for Amanda and Davis. You'll find those streets in Stop Six. And the lady next to her is Major Cheney's daughter, the man you just saw. But she cooked, baked, and cleaned for the Bear family. We all know who the Bears are, right? Good old bread, right? Smelled really good when I was growing up. We'd be coming through downtown and we could smell the bread bacon. She swears, and this is the story we tell in our presentation, that the bread, that recipe that Ms. Baird is using, that's my recipe. <laughs> so we always say legend has it <laughs> that the recipe that Mrs. Baird's bread uses belongs to Dolly Cheney. And I believe her, because she's my aunt, my great, great aunt. And again, newspaper articles, you're gonna find your history in newspaper. We have a lot of newspaper clipping about the history of Fort Worth in the black neighborhood. And then you have a very prominent woman, Hazel Harvey Peace. Small woman, quiet, carried a big stick, loud when she needed to be, okay? She didn't have to speak loud at all. All she had to do is say it, and it got done. But she was a dean at I Am Terrell. I don't know how old she was when she died. Some say 100, some say 105. I believe she was over 100. Mm -hmm. I really do because my dad graduated in 1941. She was there. We have some other friends of the family. They graduated in 29. She was there. You know, that kind of thing. So how old is this woman? 
We have uh, a diploma signed by Principal uh, I am Terrell, 1910. And the woman said, this is our grandson, Miss Peace was there. So <laughs> I don't know how old she was. I'm just glad she was here because she was a great educator. And there's a school named after her. There's a municipal building named after her in the Terrell Heights neighborhood. So very important woman. And she loved children. And in this library, there's a wing dedicated to children, the children's area. Hazel Harvey Peace Wing. Very, very important. We have history like Dansby in our uh, museum. And I thought this picture was so appropriate. Sometimes the dream is a reality. Sometimes it's a nightmare, okay? <laughs> but it's a reality here. It became a reality for President Obama. Sometimes the dream is alive, but sometimes the dream is deferred a little bit. Didn't happen for some. But at least there was a dream. And then we have a gospel singer. I believe she's still living. She's in a nursing home. But one of the greatest gospel singers right here, Francine Reese Morrison, right here. And we have more. But she's one of, the, one of the better ones. And believe it or not, Kirk Franklin that everybody loves, especially young people. And I think he's more of a hip-hop gospel person. <laughs> Uh, I'm not that used to it, but anyway, <laughs> but I know some of his music, and, and it's good. He's a good arranger, and he can write, and I like his music, but I can't bring it to my church to do that. Yeah, I, just, I just can't do it, but he was, right, he was born right here in Fort Worth, you know, and we're trying to get him here so that we can get that young crowd to come, come to Harambe, come see the museum, you know, and you have people like... Uh, Kathleen Hicks. Without Kathleen, we wouldn't have period lighting in the neighborhood, Terrell Heights. She was responsible for that. She was also very instrumental in that plaza getting done. Uh, and I happened to run across the paperwork that said, in concept, there was a concept for an African American museum in that plaza. And it would have been right where 7-Eleven is on that corner. So I take it to the planning department because you know me. <laughs> I'm gonna make it happen, you know. I need us to have our own museum, right? So that our stuff won't be here at the library in the basement in boxes, right? So I'd go to planning department and say, Dana, here it is in black and white. There's supposed to be a museum there. Where is it? And she reminded me, see that word concept? <laughs> it was a concept. I said, okay. So now I know what we really have to do. And so we're gonna be having a capital campaign to raise funds to build one. It's gonna take some time, but it's gonna happen. And then Judge Mary Ellen Hicks is her mother. My favorite person in Fort Worth, besides Mr. Little John and his grandson. <laughs> Bob Ray Sanders, making history before history was even thought about for him was always a journalist growing up. Whenever anything happened in our neighborhood, he would always have a tape recorder, a pen, and paper. Whether it was at Vacation Bible School, and we had five churches in a very small neighborhood, but we went to Vacation Bible School to every one of them, and he covered the story, okay? If there was a fire, he covered the story. If there was a fight, he covered that story. He always had pen and paper, and one of the first black journalists at Star Telegram, and he's still there making history, a great journalist. Also, he and I were the first ones to go to uh, only two blacks in line when the Beatles movie came out, A Hard Day's Night. Here we are, gotta make a difference, gotta be there, you know? And we thought something was gonna happen. Guess what? We were disappointed. Nothing happened, nobody challenged us, we going in. <laughs> and we went in and we enjoyed the movie because we liked the music. The Beatles. And then you have Mark Vesey, who's now in Washington, another great guy. And then in our collection, you'll see information about a lot of these people, whether it be Ron Washington, he's local. Uh, the Williams sisters, we're going to try to get here. Again, it costs money. But you want to bring people in so children can come and understand why you need to preserve your history. 
We're trying to get uh, Harlem Globetrotters, you know, bring them here so the kids can come, so we can get the information out. You know, we won't get El uh, Holder. Maybe we'll get Condoleezza, but her fee is so outrageous. But maybe one day. Colin Powell, his fee is outrageous. I, believe me, I've checked. <laughs> Michelle Obama, I always email her. One day they'll answer. <laughs> Oprah, I always email her. One day she'll come. And that's just my belief. I, I have to believe, you know. I have to dream that one day these people will come right here and do something very important for our city and the history of our people. This is the one I really want. Michelle, you can get out of the way. I'd rather have him. Okay. In more, no, no. More ways than one, like at a breakfast, at a dinner, or whatever, those kind of ways. Okay. He's too young for me, guys. He could be my son, almost. But we want that family to come. Show the city what a family is like. They made history. That dream was a reality. We didn't think it could happen historically. But in our museum, our small museum on Humboldt Street, we have his speech, the very first one. We have it on our wall. The inauguration, we have the cup, we have the program. We have this in our museum. Dr. Brooks, who passed away some time ago, Roy Brooks, the commissioner, Roy Brooks, we have his collection. You know, we have his. Um, baccalaureate program, you know, from Howard University. We have all of this information, and it's for you to see. We have artifacts that belong to doctors. We have doctor's bags that were used. Dr. Burnett was my doctor when I was a little girl. We have his doctor's bag. We have the old-fashioned blood pressure cuff, okay, in a wooden box, but it's on display. Okay. We, all, we also have the little thing, this metal, they tap your reflex, tap your knee for the reflex. We have that kind of information. We have that in our museum. Come by and see it. We have a replica of the old electric car. Okay, that ran up and down the street, and the last stop was stop six. Okay, that was the last stop. We have a replica, and because we made friends with the Museum of Science and History, they let us use it forever. So we still have it until they ask for it back. Well, what do they need with it, right? So I'm gonna keep it until they ask for it. And so we sign proper papers, we have it, they know we have it, but at least they gave it to us to, to showcase, okay? So it's there. Our artwork, again, being showcased by people that do art with their hands as far as making a mask out of wire and it looks like rope, okay? But this guy is so talented, he's in the show. Burl Washington who paints Buffalo Soldiers, okay? And then the good old Western guys. And then you have the Huckabees on the right-hand side top, those top two uh, pictures, paintings, and they're really drawings. The top one is a photograph placed on fabric. This girl is tough. She's the one who did the artwork at the Shambly Library. The mosaic walkway, the stained glass in the library, right here in our community, right here, okay? History we have. Future programs and our calendar for the year. January, we reserved the day of service all over America because of Martin Luther King. For the whole month of February, you can come and see this artwork, okay? And on the 8th, since you guys made it here, I'm going to send out my own special invitation to you. If you want to come, we have a VIP reception. I consider you VIP because you came today. Okay? So if you want to come, come. I don't care if the museum is just, just <coughs> rolling over with people. If we run out of food, we just run out of food. Okay? Jack in the Box is right down the street. <laughs> okay? But come, because on the 8th, three of these people will win something. It's going to be first in show, however they do it, second in show, the first runner up, whatever, but somebody's gonna win. Best in show, okay? I hate that word best in show because it reminds me of the dog show and I want to try to find another term for best in show, so I'll look it up. Uh, March, 
We're going to talk about the role of nurses of color in Fort Worth. Okay, not only did blacks uh, have a rough time getting education, be, getting jobs in the nursing field, in hospitals, uh, so did the Spanish women. Okay, and you'll learn all about that. Okay, there were they were there with the Red Cross too. Okay, um, and most of our uh, workshops are held right across the street from the museum at Baker Chapel. So from 10 to noon, you can be at a workshop and they could just walk across the street and see our exhibit. Okay? Two in one. Uh, in May, good old Anna, she's, she's the one that helps us with all of our uh, genealogy workshops as, as well as Miss Hansen over here. We'll be talking about using military records uh, for genealogy research. And then again in June, we're going to talk about the amazing life because he had an amazing life. Okay, he was married more than one time. And people like to get the dirt on people. <laughs> but hey, I was married more than once. But he has an amazing life. He was very religious too. He was a Mason. In fact, he was uh, the Grand Secretary or whatever. But you're going to hear about him. And then we're going to talk about our good friend. And he's over 90 years old, but he gets around as well as I do, Mr. Reby Carey, who writes a book almost every year. You know, there's one that comes out every year. He's got about 15 out already, okay? And I have one with me today. <clears throat> well, we'll be talking about him. And I want to have it in a larger environment than Baker Chapel, if we can, because I think a lot of people will come to hear about Mr. Reby Carey and meet him. Uh, also in May, we're going to be meeting with the ladies who are on uh, an eye apparel. Uh, she's, she's an optometrist, but she's doc, uh, Reverend Holiday's daughter. And he, has, he had two daughters. One owns Flowers to Go. Her flower shop is right here downtown Fort Worth. Black lady. Okay, her name is Marie Holiday. If anybody. Okay, Marie Holiday, daughter of the famous. Reverend C.A. A. Holiday, he could preach. And every Sunday morning, because you didn't have TV during that time, they weren't on TV, but they were on the radio. My father would turn their radio on, and of course you could hear it all over the house. But C.A. Holiday was on, Hennigan was on, all those people were on. But we're going to talk about that family and the important role of the religious community and how it impacts our lives. Without that religious community, we wouldn't know how to vote. We wouldn't know where to go to vote. We wouldn't get transportation to the voting booth. So the preachers played a very important role. The church plays a very important role. Anna is putting together a family reunion toolkit because she knows all about family history. So we want to entice people that come to our museum and want to be members. We want to be able to give them something. You know, so we're going to teach you how to trace your tree, but we're going to give you a kit. You may have to pay for it, but you go, it's going to be there. Okay. Uh, September, believe it or not, we have Native American blood in us. Some of us, all of us probably do. We're all God's children, so there's nothing wrong with it. But we're going to research your Native American heritage. Some of us do have the Native American blood in us. We're going to find out. And you'd be surprised if we get on Facebook and ask people, if you're one-eighth um, American Indian, please come to this workshop, they'll show up. And then we'll get to learn how to trace your, your heritage that way. October 18th, please come out to the plaza on Evans Avenue and be amongst a lot of people from, I say the Metroplex because they're there. Bring your children because there's a kid's zone there. If you want your blood pressure check, you can get it done there. We have people from uh, American Cancer Society and Moncrief uh, Institute. So we, whatever you need, I think we, we can handle it. And then in November, um, we talk about Thanksgiving traditions. And then in Christmas, we unwrap Christmas to tell you how it really got started. Anna does a great presentation. Uh, I think Gail, at one time you did Christmas traditions at the Boone House. Bring your own family tradition. Write the story, bring it to us. We have some of that on file. So everybody can be a part of history. You can be a part of our museum. 
You can be part of our society by becoming a member today. I couldn't get away without saying that. <laughs> in fact, I brought applications today just in case because my goal is to have 100 new members every year. Not the same one, new members every year. We want the old ones to renew, but we need new members too. Because one of these old days, I'm not gonna be here. Anna won't be around, Gail won't be around. Somebody has to carry on. And they have to be that younger generation or another person just as passionate or someone who has that same vision. And we're working on the 50th anniversary of the Civil Rights Act. It's still an act, it's not law, okay? It has to be law. People need civil rights. It's okay to be an act, but it's 50 years and there's no law. So we need to do something. So we'll have some type of workshop or event. Uh, that's why there's an asterisk there. I haven't gotten with a person yet. I haven't touched base with the library yet, but we need to do something right around Juneteenth or August or April 8th when he was assassinated, Martin Luther King. Those dates are very, very prominent. August when people marched on Washington. And while people were marching to Washington, Dr. Brooks marched to Austin, Texas from Fort Worth. Okay? So things happen right here. And we probably didn't even know about it because I didn't until I researched it and found out that Dr. Brooks marched to what? I mean, he marched to Austin while King was marching, marching to, to Washington. That's how important it was for all people. All people. How can you help? And I'm doing pretty good. I usually run out of time. You can become a member today, or tomorrow, or Monday. You can come visit, tell your friends, you know, that there is an organization that's collecting history, preserving it, with the help of the library, the museums right here in Fort Worth. We're legit, and we're here to stay. We're 37 years old. Like us on Facebook. Can you believe we have a Facebook page? That's huge. That's huge because I am not a technology person. My husband is, but we're there. Of course, we have a website, but we have a Facebook page for our web, our organization as well as Harambe. And you can go up and see pictures. All these pictures I showed, they're on Facebook. Beautiful, beautiful pictures. We also need volunteers. Whenever we have an event like on the 8th, if you say, Brenda, I want to be a volunteer just to help you escort people in and out, fine. We always need workshops. We always need people to help us out. So become a volunteer. We love volunteers. We even have training programs for our volunteers. Each one of our rooms has a cheat sheet in it, a whole book. It's a notebook, but only has one page in it. That's how simple it is to tour our facility because I'm about simple but effective, okay? You don't need 25 pages to know about this room, but you can just t take the tour yourself. And what we really need help with, because we want to be a little bit better than just reading, we want you to be able to put on some headphones and listen as you walk through. Okay, so that's our, our next step. But it takes money to do that. And that's why we need 100 new members every year. Okay? Thank you very much. Our website, terrorcountyblackhistory.org. You can email us at info at terrorcountyblackhistory.org or you can email me. My husband doesn't like for me to give out my email nor my phone number, but I do, my cell especially, because it rings all day and night. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a new phone and it ping, ping, ping every time there's a message or a phone and he just goes ballistic. <laughs> but when his does it, it's okay, right? So anyway, my email is there. You can email me anytime. You can email the organization anytime because I answer it too. And that's the phone number to uh, the museum. But my number is 817-733-5293. And I will always answer or return the call. <laughs> always. I like getting calls about the museum because it's important to me. And I want to thank you for coming.
we met when my mom, again, this is how history happened when my mom and dad passed away. If it hadn't been for her, we wouldn't have got the will process. Again, the importance of a will. This is what you got to talk about in your genealogy workshop. Without that, you won't have any history. Okay, that's a very important piece, a very important document. The will, obituaries, things like that. Come to our workshops, you'll learn all about it. Now, thank you very much again, and I'm open for questions. And we're right on time, library.